Hey guys, it's me, Mark. Uh, so, you, you might have a lot of questions. Um, why is this not a list video? Why is this not a breakdown or analysis of some description? And I decided to change it up just for this week. I'll be going back to like the regular schedule programming next week. But I figured this week I'd like to show you guys what I like to do. Before I made this YouTube channel, I actually was studying animation and wanted to become an illustrator or animator and still do a little bit. But this is just something that I just kind of wanted to make. Because when I was a kid, I was looking for, you know, ways to draw different Dragon Ball characters. But they were always in very specific ways, the methods that I found online. Um, like... They, people would always like do this fucking they just draw the box thing and like like that and like okay so you, what you want to do is you want to draw it like this and then like that like personally I don't think that's very conducive to becoming a better artist I think that's learning how to draw a specific character in a very specific way and it's very it, at least I think it locks you down to doing one specific thing so what I want to show you today is how to draw not only Vegeta Super Saiyan Blue 2, but I wanted to show you how you can draw any character you want in any pose you want. Because sometimes just the front view pose isn't exactly very, you know, interesting to look at. Alright, so, um, a lot of people when they're drawing, myself included, I would be very much like, okay, so I'll just start drawing this eye like that, I'll do that, and oh yeah, that, that's looking good, I'll do that, and you know... I'll do all those different things and, you know, eventually then you start, like, you lose track of where you are relative, like, the proportions don't work. And the reasons why the proportions don't work is, is for a variety of reasons, really, but at least for me, when I was a kid, it was, it was because I didn't have a clue about anatomy, I didn't have any basic understanding of all that kind of bullshit, you know. And, <laughs> little face there. Um, okay, let's get rid of that. <laughs> I didn't have a basic understanding of anatomy and I think that's a really common issue with a lot of artists and upcoming artists nowadays. And the reason why I think it's a problem is because drawing anatomy is boring. People want to be able to draw their favorite characters and they want to be able to draw them, you know, well. But nothing worth having is ever easy to get so you do have to practice and I have put in my fair share of practice. I have sketchbooks filled with different life drawings of pictures and people and stuff like that. So, just to get this out of the way, I think this is the best way for a beginner to approach drawing a complex image. But I'm just going to stop talking, I'm just going to get into it. So you might notice that I have these two guys on the left. The top one is a very, very, very good illustrator on Twitter. I left his, his handle is right here. Um, below that, I found this pose online randomly. I just thought it was a very dynamic pose. I think that's X23. Um, but it's just some uh, sketch work done by this, another very talented artist whose Twitter handle is right here, so if you want to check them out, they're there. Um, so, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to show you not just how to draw Vegeta, but how to draw any character in any pose. It just happens that today we're doing Vegeta. I'm going to stop not drawing, and I'm going to show you uh, the, 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 the method to which I came to draw that character. Now, I have all of this done already. I just want to show you uh, how, to, how I got there, and I'll do a little bit of drawing as well. Alright, so... Starting off, okay, so I have like a folder with loads of little folders inside, so, okay. So, the first thing, it's all about layers. So, you want to start by doing a base layer. And this is what a base layer looks like. So, how I achieve this? Two super important rules. Okay, rule number one. Always get the line of action. So, the li so what's the line of action? The line of action is essentially this line that's going straight down the character, and you want to be able to get that. When you have that, at the very least, you have a strong, grounded pose. And so that's what kind of makes the pose have a bit more energy and a bit more life to it. That line of action really helps uh, make it more dynamic, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for. Uh, so you want to have line of action. If it fits in there, it does, cool. And the second one I wanted to talk about is, and this is the most important one, I think. Usually when people are drawing something, when they step away from it and are finished with it, and they don't apply these rules, a lot of the time the proportions are off or they're disjointed and they don't fit together well. It looks like a poorly done drawing, and trust me, I've been there. To combat this, I uh, use this method that a lot of people use. So, you see how these shoulders are just a line. So, every single pose has this. So. Like, I was trying to use this pose as inspiration for this one. I adjusted it slightly because he's a slightly larger frame, but um, this person here, so 
you see these two shoulders, that there's a line, so that line would be like that. It's like around that same angle, you have that, and you have the bigger shoulder. And when you have that line going through your line of action, those are your shoulders. You don't need to worry where your shoulders are anymore. I would draw this line here, I draw these two things, and those are the shoulders. I don't need to worry about where the shoulders are anymore, they are there. So one last thing, you want to find out where the hips are, so there's a straight line going through here. So you want to go straight line, and then you find the hips. Now you can forget about the shoulders, you can forget about the hips, and because you have those two things, everything is going to fit together so much nicer, and you don't need to try nearly as hard. That's one of the most important things I think people forget when they're drawing. We're all a bunch of parts amalgamated together, so if you have an idea of where the shoulders are relative to the hips, and the, and the angle of which they are placed, then you are in a much better place than you would be just guessing. And this is one of the big rules that helped me hugely. Um, yeah, so you, what you want to do is you want to find the shoulder, shoulders, and hips. So, that's the first rule. So, when I had those, I was able to find and apply that rule to pretty much everything. And I got my, I got something that I was fairly happy with. Those are my, this is my base sketch. My initial proportion stuff, right? Right, so... After this, I would build off of this, as in create a new layer, or if you're working on paper, you can just, you know, put a, another sheet over it and trace over. Um, the, your rough sketches. Your rough sketches come next. And over, and so, as you can see, I applied um, the rough sketches to the initial skeleton work, and as a result, things are relatively in proportion, and that's pretty good. Uh, these hands, uh, the hands I just took, these are just my hands. <laughs> They're just pictures that I took of my hand, and, and you see the line of action here too. Um, these are just pictures I took of my hands and I would draw them. How I draw hands would be, okay, let's just zoom in here. So how I, how I would draw hands, as you can see, I would just kind of get the basic shape of the hand, and then there are these little bits here. That would be where the, the, the actual fingers are. And then when you have that, you can just... It, it's much easier to just go off that then, you know? Like, I don't want to make this video about drawing hands, but one thing I want to get across is I'm not looking at this drawing as one huge thing that I need to get done. It's just, it's one thing that is made up of a bunch of small things. And if I deal with each individual small thing, they're, first of all, much more manageable. And second of all, it helps get everything done just that little bit more smoothly. So, yeah, so if, if, if I go back here and show you this, I got the head. And so what I would just do, I would just lightly sketch... You know, just around this here, just kind of like getting like what I think is where his face and everything should be. I can adjust it all later, but um, the whole point of this rough sketch anyway was just to get an idea. You know, there's like obviously a lot of things that are wrong with this, but the whole point of this is to get you to a point where doing the final line work isn't a huge task. It's actually going to be fun. So... For instance, I won't keep his face exactly like that. It's just a good example of where I want the face to be. So, like, actually, look, I think a really good example of this is the face. So, when I was drawing this face, I wanted to try to capture something from uh, this gentleman's Twitter sketches, but I didn't want to straight up copy it or trace it. So, what I actually did was I opened up the character sheets for Vegeta for Dragon Ball Super, and I tried to strike a middle ground between this man's sketch and the character designs that are supplied by uh, Toy Animation for Dragon Ball Super. And when I did that, I went and did my final line work and my final line work looked something like this. Now there's a big jump here you might think, but it's actually not that much. If you look beneath here, you can see that my base sketch, I've just tweaked slight things off my base sketch and that's really how this whole thing comes together. It's all just, feeling it out, what looks right, what doesn't look right. This isn't an impressive effort because you know now what went into making it. It's all a building block process. If I was to tell you that I went from nothing to this, then yeah, that's impressive. And there are some artists out there that can do that and fucking they're amazing and they are genuinely good. But now that you know that I went from this to this to this, it's not as impressive anymore because I'm showing you the process, the building blocks that went into making it. And that's all it is. So I wanted to try to hit a nice balance here between uh, this man's Vegeta 
and Toy Animation's Dragon Ball Super's Vegeta also. And I think I kind of like hit a little bit closer to Dragon Ball Super, but I'm okay with that. I'm actually very happy with the way the face turned out. And it's nice and expressive, and I always like to add a little bit of extra detail to the teeth as well. I don't know why, I just something that I like to do. Um, but yeah, so like just to show you, just to give you a, like a little example of what I would do if I was actually drawing this. So like, uh, for instance, like if I was to draw this, right, I would like, I would make sure not to do this. This is, I think, something that a lot of artists do because, and I found out it's because they are unsure of their lines and stuff. What you want to do, and this is, and this will again improve your drawings ten times more, is make sure it's just one solid line. You know, just to get, just, just to make sure that it's just one solid motion. And you can do this a bunch of times. You know, I mean, you can you can do it with your rubber or, or, or all that kind of stuff, but it really does make a huge different w difference with your with your with your illustrations. If you do that, and you can tidy it up and stuff, but. The whole point is just to get a smooth, consistent line that doesn't look sketchy because, again, the final line art shouldn't be sketchy, you know? Um, but yeah, but like, there are a lot of things that you can do, like, you know, to make everything just that little bit better. Like, I mean, I could make him like super angry and all that kind of stuff, and that usually has to go into like the eyes and the angle to which they're being put at and stuff like you know but there are, there are a lot of things that that you can do to make this stuff work but it just takes time and i think that's the thing that people don't like about illustration people who say they can draw i don't believe that i just believe it's all down to how much time and how much effort you place into the drawing um so yeah so the final line art was this and so with everything removed this is where we are boom this is where it is this is where we are with the Vegeta drawing. And so far, everything looks perfectly in proportion because I applied those rules regarding the shoulders, the line of action still there, the hips are still there. All that stuff is still there, those things that I set up day one. And because I set those things up day one, we have a solid sketch or a solid final product. There are a bunch of different principles at play here. Oh, I also kind of like fluff the hair a bit because I like giving the hair a bit of a volume. Um, so yeah, there's a, there are a bunch of different things at play here, so so let me give you an example. Um, right here we have the shoulder thing, right? This kind of shoulder strap that Vegeta has. So there are a lot of things that can... So yeah, so like, there are a lot of uh, things here, say. And you want to be able to know, okay, how do I get this stuff to work together properly? And to be honest, it's all about just practice. You got So like, how do you make this thing look three-dimensional now? Because, you know, you have this thing, and it's it's very flat. The whole point of the rough sketch is just to give yourself an idea of where you're going to be putting all of this uh, detail in. Because, you know, when you're, the final line art is really where the final drawing comes together. So, like, for instance, with this, right, you would do something like that, and then you would bring it over here, maybe, like, I'm just going to do this really quick. Um, you do this like that, boom. And then to make it look 3D, you go bang like that, and look, all of a sudden... Boom, it's 3D, you know, and you, and, and you do that all over the place, you know, just like that. And look, and, and then just like that, boom, it's 3D. And like, you know, it doesn't look half bad. It's all right, but like, okay, it's, it's kind of shitty, but you know, but you, you get the point. It's just a collection of different drawing practices that come with experience, um, that come with experience. But again, in saying that, I believe anyone can do this if they want to enough. You know, like learning how to do the creases and stuff. Like these are just things that will come over time and stuff. You know, um, but yeah. So we're at the final line art stage, and the next stage then would be coloring. So boom, we have color. Bang. I just pretty much took all of these colors from an episode of Super, so <laughs> that's why everything looks decent there. But it's just a question of coloring in the lines. Then that's fine. Everything's good. We're all gravy. But right now it looks like a very flat image and it's not like, you know, because we have some forced perspective here, you'd like to make it look more 3D and to make it look more 3D, you add shading. But before you add shading, you need to think about where's the light source coming from. So when I was making this, I wanted to have, uh, you know, these balls uh, of energy coming from his hands. That means that there is light coming from this side and this side, which means that the shadow will be going cast right down the middle of his body. And so I did that with each individual aspect of him. So let's start with the hair. So with the hair, boom, 
I added this shading. So again, these are all colors that I just took straight from uh, a next episode preview. We have the kind of this nice purple color, but I also added these kind of things in here as well. This isn't in super. This is just something that I added because I just thought it looked cool. I don't know. Okay, so some, something interesting here with the hair. So the light is here from his hands and it's traveling this way. Therefore, it will cast a shadow. And that's exactly what I've done here. This hair here casts a shadow here. And this hair here casts a shadow here. And that gives it a sense of three dimensionality, as I said before, which is what we're trying to get here. Okay, so moving on, we have the blue clothes, boom. These are okay. I think I could have done these better, but again, I just, you know, you, lo <laughs> you, you do lose enthusiasm. So yeah, again, all the shadows are kind of working around the idea that from both sides there's light and like again it's all about just playing around with it seeing what works what doesn't work and you know it's a, there there is a lot of guesswork but again over time you'll just become better at it moving down we have the gold plating and stuff so yeah um i had the shadow here because this bit of armor here kind of like juts out a little bit so kind of like here but you know i don't know how to explain it towards the camera i suppose and that's why there's a shadow there Moving on to the white clothing. Okay, so I did that because there's shadow here. And so like, I'm going through the shading individually just so that I can give you guys an idea of why I did something. I think it's fine if you want to look at some guy draw something, but this is really for people who just want to learn how I do things and why I've done it this way and the choices that I've made and etc. So yeah, you'll see the hands here. This is kind of cool. I, can, I, I really like doing the hands. I do love drawing hands, actually. It's one of, like, it's one of the things that a lot of people hate, so I, I made sure that it's something that I can do. You'll see that the light source is coming from the middle of the hand, and therefore, the way, the way light moves, it kind of bends around stuff. Think of it like a bubble pressing against a, a glass wall. It, the, the, there's always going to be a kind of a circular aspect to it. And so that's why everything here seems to have like kind of like bendy motion around it and it kind of it does create a very realistic look to it i think and i'm very happy with the way that turned out okay i give that like okay so the last thing i want to show you guys is the shadow for the skin boom all of a sudden it looks so much better and it's kind of come together as a drawing because of that aspect now i kind of copied takahashi's thing here because it looks kind of cool um, but other than that, this this is just three tone shading. So we have the normal base tone, we have a shadow tone, and we have a darker shadow tone that are used sparingly. Um, but yeah, this is something that you can just copy directly off. Like again, I, I popped reference from like Dragon Ball Z or Episode 122 for this specifically. Um, and that's pretty much it. So when I when I was a kid, there weren't any drawing tutorials specifically for how to draw Dragon Ball characters. So. I had to learn myself, so I'm hoping that these tips and tricks and I'm hoping to instill a few principles in people that like this is how you draw and this is how you should draw. There's no right and wrong way of drawing, but this way definitely helps if you don't have uh, a grasp on anatomy yet. And I certainly don't. You <laughs> Look at that arm, it looks weird. So I hope you found this insightful for the four people that are left watching. Um, for the others that weren't interested in this, you know, I'll be making regular videos again next week. But this is just something that I wanted to show you guys how I made this character. And with this character, then you can, you know, you can just add stuff to it. So, like, I added stuff like, I don't know, effects. I added, I added like, lightning and stuff and some kind of blast to his hands. I thought, I thought that looked kind of cool. You know, I kind of gave him an outer aura with kind of, like, the sparkles and stuff. And then you can just, like, you know, throw in a background. Boom. And then all of a sudden, you have, like, a scene. And that looks fine then, you know? Like, if you were to look at this picture, you think, oh, fuck, okay. And I would be too, I'd be like, I have no idea how to start this fucking thing. I guess I'll just start drawing and hope for the best. That is not what you want to do. What you want to do is as follows. You want to find where the shoulders are and join them up and at, at the correct angle, find where the hips are and join them up and then find the line of action. And then find the line of action. When you have those things, you are in an infinitely better position than you were before. I know I've been kind of all over the place with this, but uh, this is essentially just what I wanted to get across to you guys, and I hope that some, at least some of you found it helpful. Vegeta is one of my favorite characters. Super Saiyan Blue 2 it looks fucking awesome. Um, if you guys would like me to draw anything else and show you how to draw it, then I can do that, but um, really, I'm going to go back to my normal programming next week, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> It's a one-off. Um, I didn't script anything, obviously. I'm, and I'm apologizing for being sort of all over the place here. 
but uh, this is just something that I just wanted to do for the community, and hopefully some guys out here found it helpful. So, this is how you draw Dragon Ball characters, and pretty much any character you want, really. So, I will see you guys next week. Bye!